everyone, this is uh, Joanna and today I'd like to share with you how HDB owners can actually take advantage of this rare opportunity to profit from the property market. So, um, whom did I actually prepare this web video for? It's actually for a few groups of people. Number one, it could refer to people, HDB owners who are unsure of what is actually the next best step for them to do at this point of time. Should they just remain uh, status quo and watch the market or should they actually take advantage of the market and to perhaps get some good buy uh, to profit from the property market or you can belong to this third group of um, HDB owners or property owners and um, you just want to be a little more aware what is uh, happening in the market. You just want to feel a little bit of heartbeat um, what is happening to um, the HDB market, the private market, and how it might actually benefit or affect you. And you just want to uh, have a bit more knowledge and takes up. And um, this will benefit you. If you stay throughout, uh, through this uh, very short web video, I will be providing you with a free uh, file of um, an assessment whereby you can actually use it and to do a check what is really the next best step you should do so that um, it will be a very, very safe a move for you and your family while you try to benefit uh, and earn the upside as well. So, um, this is uh, Shomena here and I'm from Propnex. Uh, I am a real estate consultant uh, with the company and a group district director as well. So, um, on the personal level, I'm also a fellow uh, Singaporean doing my part um, in this one month, in this circuit break, uh, circle break week to stay to just stay at home. That's why I decided to do this uh, web video to share um, a bit of uh, knowledge with um, the fellow Singaporean. And of course, at this point, I just want to thank all the frontline health workers who are there to um, who are fighting very hard to keep um, Singapore really safe and uh, of course this is my team of uh, I call them my white angels who are helping fellow Singaporeans to fulfill their dream to own uh, properties and um, to build their asset and wealth as well and I firmly believe that it is also our role to ensure that um, in whichever asset that you decide to stay put or to progress to, it is a very safe and comfortable move for you and your family. So, um, why I decided to do this web video is because recently we have actually been meeting many couples. They are in the age of um, 30s to 40s and um, I realized many of them are actually at a crossroad. Uh, most of them own a HDB usually for more than five years. Some, they own a HDB that is uh, going to be five years and um, they are really wondering what um, they should do. Like what I touched on earlier, um, they are wondering if they should stay status quo because it will seem the most comfortable uh, action to take. But yet, um, they are also a little concerned about um, the value of the HDB if they actually stay on. And especially in this market, would they miss the boat if they do not take action right now? And of course, if they would to consider exploring, the question to, uh, most of them are asking me is, where do they start from and how do they um, actually get started? So today, Today, um, the goal in this web video is three things. Number one, uh, I want to equip you with actual facts and figures um, instead of by emotions that you make the decision. And number two, uh, I will educate you on like um, the current property trend that is uh, backed by facts and figures as well and to empower you to make informed decision um, during this period. Okay, and this is my disclaimer. All this are personal, um, all this my personal view and sharing. Um, okay, so today let's get started. How does COVID actually affect the real estate market? Okay, this is the biggest topic right now. Um, from what I understand, uh, in my interaction with many HDB owners, uh, they have three main concerns when they would to consider doing something. Number one, they are uncertain, like what is the best step for them now? Okay, they are uncertain because of the situation now. And of course, number two, we are we may be a little fearful of the monthly instalment, okay, if they were to consider uh, doing anything. And number three, they feel that there is just too much risk that risk involved, okay? So today, these are the three main things that we would be addressing. Okay, number one, uh, of course, um, 
currently, we, it may seem like we are in very uncertain times. Um, the stock market is dropping and of course on certain good days, um, they do um, increase as well. But it's a kind of like a roller coaster currently. And um, there are also um, some couples that I have met. Um, some of them are in the banking industry. Um, they are a little concerned uh, what is going to happen to their job, especially as they watch the US market. And um, I also have clients whom I'm seeing who are in the aviation industry who are a little affected. Um, they are concerned about um, retrenchment and sometimes even um, they are concerned that they might be forced to uh, go unemployed. So honestly, I, 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 I feel and I understand um, it must be a little stressful uh, for them. Uh, I have been through some of um, the crisis in Singapore, uh, be it whether is it SARS, or the last Lehman crisis. And I can totally understand if I am actually in that situation, I will also be very worried about the livelihood for myself and how it would um, affect my family. So today, um, this uh, sharing that I'm doing here, right, is not about um, you need to buy something from me or I'm going to sell something, uh, but more on um, to share with you so that you can understand and prepare yourself in the event there could be suitable opportunities that come along and that um, you are prepared and you, 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 you have learned the trend and uh, you are able to take hold of uh, all these opportunities, okay? So currently, um, it is definitely uncomfortable and uh, because things are uncertain. So um, I always believe that when there is a crisis, there is definitely an opportunity because um, I have uh, many, many well-to-do clients and um, when I actually interview them, how do you make your wealth, uh, which is my favorite question, when I meet this uh, well-to-do client, very often they will tell me that um, they took some calculated risk at certain important um, periods of their life. Um, we are not talking about taking high risk here, but we are talking about taking some calculated risk um, especially in situation whereby they see the opportunity, uh, be it whether in business or for some of them in uh, buying a property or sometimes even stock, um, they take calculated risk, they count um, to the very sand what is involved and they ask themselves, if I were to take such a risk, would I still be comfortable? So we want to understand how these um, people who make it um, actually uh, yeah, how do they actually build up their wealth in a very systematic and safe manner? Uh, we just want to understand so that we will avoid uh, costly mistakes ourselves. And um, let's go through this to have a better understanding, okay? But maybe at this point of time, uh, it could be you are in a more stable job. The only thing that probably that you might be affected is um, you have to work from home. You probably have to take care of your kids and uh, participate in their home-based learning. Um, but other than that, you know that your income should be pretty stable. Um, the only thing that affects you is uh, your weekend nowadays are spent at home, uh, thinking what to cook for them or like like um, you are thinking of ways to entertain your kids, um, but you're not too affected. So probably you have some reserve funds that you have built over the years and you have been waiting for such a time like this, or perhaps that you have been uh, holding your HDB for some time, you have been leader, leading a very uh, frugal life and um, you are thinking, hey, actually mm, it is time to perhaps explore and to see if there are really suitable opportunities. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, um, are we comfortable to make some changes in our life so that we could sign up for a better future for ourselves and our family? And um, can we actually calculate and know for sure what is the risk that is involved if we were to make certain decisions and how do we actually calculate the risk? And um, how do we actually take certain precautions so that we can protect our hard-earned money. So let's take a look at uh, what happened to people who take action during uh, uncertain times. Okay, so the first period that we want to look at is actually the SARS period, which happened in the year 2003. So in the year 2003, I remember there was a time I just graduated from school, and um, the, pe uh, the, the SARS was for a very short period. It was just basically for effectively uh, four to six months. It started around February, March 2003, and around June, we were cleared by WHO that, um, yeah, we are cleared of SARS. And um, the property, 
rose actually almost 100 over percent during this period for people that choose to enter in the year 2003 to 2004. And uh, we also have, um, let's take a look in specific, uh, I was sharing with you that SARS lasted only uh, four to six months. For people that actually choose to enter the property during this period, let's take a look at one example, which is ICON. They entered this property, this new launch by Faris, when it was launched in the year 2003 at 600 plus per square feet. If one actually hold the property all the way till the TOP, the property actually went up more than 1,000 per square feet. And this would translate to more than $1 million worth of profit for the buyer. Um, I thought that was really quite a big sum of money. Let's take a look at another property, a very prime property called um, Pierre at Robertson. And um, the people also benefited a lot when they chose to enter during this um, SARS period. Let's take a look at uh, the people who chose to enter the market around the subprime period, which is uh, which happened in the year 2008 to 2009. Um, this is just a very simple property, which is at the outside core region in uh, Sydney, called Double Bay. Um, people who enter this property, whether is it as a form of investment or to stay, most of them at, at exited at, at least a six-digit figure if they had bought in the year 2009. And even for some of my clients who took action during the year, after the last cooling measure in the year 2013, um, this is actually North Park's performance. Um, for people that moved in into this new property, they, 2015, they actually profited three to 400,000 for holding just a mere four year period, four to five years period. So the thing is that, Mm, what we can learn from all this crisis is ultimately the prices move back up again. And uh, of course, the question now is how long would this COVID last? But the thing is we need to take note um, is that it's unlikely to be here forever because uh, even in China, it has already, um, the, the businesses are already slowly moving, um, opening up for businesses already. And um, it, uh, as long as we are able to fight this virus together, soon we will be out of this situation and everything will be back to normal. So the first thing is that um, what we have learned from here is people that actually enter the market during uncertain times. Yes, I understand there is a certain amount of fear and, uh, and uncertainty. It is very uncomfortable. But um, tough times really do not last forever. So we need to do our own check. We Only we know our finances the best. If you need somebody to go through in details your finance um, and um, what is really necessary, what can be explored, uh, I will be glad to do so together with you so that um, whichever option you decide to go for, right, it will be something that is very comfortable, very safe, so that even whether um, there's good times, bad times, you are not in a hurry to offload the property in any way. So second thing I would like to share on, the second concern of many HDB upgraders is is definitely the monthly installment. So I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to actually plan our safety net. We need to make sure, be it good time, bad times, we are prepared to for what is involved and that we know and we know and we are very sure how long our reserve funds can last and um, so that we will not be caught off guard. So we need to plan, we need to take precaution. So when this is done right, the property purchase will not be something that cause risk. The property purchase will not be something that will give you stress. It should be something that is very comfortable with it. Maybe I'd like to share with you a case study of um, how I've applied my, um, this risk analysis method on uh, my client, Mr. and Mrs. Tan, and this has definitely helped them um, to be able to have a proper assessment of where they really stand and to feel really safe with the whole upgrading uh, process. So let's take a look at the profile. Mr. and Mrs. Tan are both 35 years old. Mr. Tan is uh, self-employed. He is in uh, the FMB business. He runs his own business. To be frank, he is definitely uh, affected by the current situation, uh, but let's go through later this risk analysis method why he felt safe um, to go ahead with it because his risk is very much uh, managed and uh, they live in a four-room flat in uh, Congo and uh, this four-room flat still has a hundred thousand loan okay let's take a look currently 
okay and when they were in the stage of exploring okay um he has many concerns okay he was very concerned first of all he is a self-employed that means he would not be getting a fixed pay from anybody he has to be making sure on his toe that there is revenue coming in every month and he was very concerned that um First of all, even if he wants to explore, how would the bank be uh, gauging his income? Because uh, the bank would not recognize 100% of his income as a self-employed. Number two, um, they are age 35 and this would be like their first private property if they were to explore. Um, so they were asking me, you know, Joe, are you sure that um, this is the correct age to really do that? Um, 35 is not very young, not very old, and we're not really sure about it. Um, I, I mean, that's normal, okay? And um, of course, I shared with you their business owner and in fact, they just started their business and how did I even know them was uh, we got acquainted when they came to see one of my uh, commercial property um, for rental and um they have one child already and um there is a newborn uh they just had and um, they're just worried can they really cope with all the monthly installment so first of all we did a very clear check on their loan assessment this was actually uh done and in fact they could even loan up to almost 1.1 plus okay let's take a look at um we also did out all their possible options all their possible um possible options whereby can it be done that just Mr. Tan would be purchasing one private or can it be done that it is Mrs. Tan who just purchased one private under her own name. We also explore the idea of what if they were to combine funds together and to buy one private together or perhaps to buy one EC together or even um, just to move nearer to the parents place um, uh, and get a bigger HDB since um, their family is uh, expanding. So we look at all the possible options but what made them felt really at ease is if you were to take a closer look, the current situation is if they choose to exit from their current property, they will have a total funds of almost 500,000. It comes from um, the cash proceed, which is released out from their HDB. They would have um, in on from the HDB and their current funds about 300,000. But what they felt very, very safe was um, through the whole planning, even if they were to go into a private property that is almost 1.3 million, they would be able to upgrade without touching their own cash savings. And um, the funds that they have would be enough for more than um, five years without touching their own funds and because they choose to do this they also unlock almost uh, 130,000 from the HDB which could be set aside for rainy days all right and this is uh, what happened before and after why uh, Mr. and Mrs. Client felt very safe with the whole process first of all currently they are in the HDB now and they felt that uh, given that there's such a huge supply of uh, HDB upcoming in Congo area, the value will likely be in bad situation holding or even dropping. By doing a swap uh, to a brand new property, they are likely signing up for something where the value would be more likely to increase. They felt very safe with the whole process because um, they do not have to own, touch their own cash savings. They created for themselves reserve funds for more than five years and at the same time, they felt safer to unlock the money from the HDB and to be holding the 130000 in their own hands than in an old HDB whereby the prices is most likely going to drop. So the next concern uh, many clients always ask me um, is that they are fearful, fearful that this buying property is there is too much risk that is involved. Okay, so first of all, we need to understand a few things, all right? If today, right, are we of the mindset, are we saving up to buy property or do we see property, right, as a saving tool? Are we buying property to save in the property? Let's take a look at what is the difference. There are speculators who are of speculative mindset. They enter a property to want to sell the property if possible, the next hour or even the next day. If that is what you are after, if you were to explore property, then perhaps property is not the correct uh, tool to be doing that. Uh, we do not advocate, or personally, I do not advocate clients to go to speculate in property because it is very high risk. The, the term that they are prepared to hold is too short and they are just after a fast gain and they do not, most of the time, they do not have the holding power. There's no contingency plan that is set aside to hold the property for long. In the event of a downturn, they would not be able to hold the water 
to hold this property and they are always in a hurry to sell. So if the market turns against their favor, they will be forced to sell and likely it might result in losses. So the person that is actually of a saving mindset, right, they treat property as a saving account. They feel they, the risk is involved that is, is very low and is very managed. They hold a mid to long term view with regards to this asset and they definitely have the holding power and they are not in a hurry to sell. Using the same example, Mr. and Mrs. Tan, uh, let me just share with you why they feel very secured with this uh, property upgrade and purchase. Because to them, they see this as a saving plan. Just like if um, for some of us, we may have like a save as you earned uh, account with the various banks. But I think um, the best deal out there should be probably giving about at best a 1.5% uh, to max, even if it's like 3%, it is usually limited to the first 20 to 50,000 worth of uh, savings only. So uh, let's be very, very conservative. Let's assume um, this property does not earn any money at all. Okay, I, I know um, in the first sharing, I talk about like um, people that go in during uncertain times and if we look at the results, the result is uh, amazing. They are earning almost like a more than a million dollars kind of profit. But let's just be very, very conservative here because uh, I prefer to be uh, more on the conservative side and uh, we can always, uh, I mean, if it outperforms, um, let's celebrate together. But if not, we have already been um, aware, we are already prepared for such, okay? So we just be very conservative and we assume that there's going to be zero growth um, from this property. And many people are concerned, if today I buy a property and I do not earn any money from it, then I am just wasting my time and like there is no gain at all and uh, I'm basically losing money and how can you say that there is no risk? But let's take a look why. Assuming even if the property does not grow, okay, uh, my client, Mr. and Mrs. Tan, they are prepared to rent out the property. Let's just be very conservative. For a three-bedroom, we would be renting out at just $3,000 a month and that means to say out of the $3,000, $2,000 go towards paying for their equity which 2000 go towards paying for the bank uh, loan. This goes into their principal. So at the end of five years, even if there should be zero uh, growth in this property, assuming that they are collecting 3000 a month from their tenant, even if the installment works out to 3005 okay, there's still a slight deficit, they would still be able to, the return on equity, right, for their property is actually 27% over a five-year period, which translates to 5% per year in this property. Versus if the same sum of money, they chose to put it in a bank account, it will translate to only 1% a year. Uh, for all this part, I will be sharing more in my Excel sheet, which I will be giving out to you free if you stay throughout to the end of the video. And, um, and if you need somebody to work out in details with you so that you can better understand this, um, once again, I will be really um, more than ready to see you this period, but online, not so much face-to-face uh, Face, uh, because we are fighting COVID. All right, so um, so the thing is that um, the question, the next question, we have addressed the three main concerns of most HDB uh, upgraders or, or, or properties owner. So let's discuss, um, would it be, assuming you want to um, find out a little bit more and you're exploring, um, why not we take a look at this, say after this whole circuit breaker, that is perfectly fine. If that is um, what you decide to do, it is definitely per per perfectly fine to actually um, discuss this after the whole circuit break. We can do a proper face-to-face -face meet up. You could even decide to um, not look at it um, till maybe a few more years later when your kids are older and you feel more secure in your job. It's perfectly fine. But today, um, let's just do a scenario, all right? Assuming, assuming we can book an air ticket overseas right now to fly out in the month, the last quarter of this year, okay? In times like this, um, you probably may not be very sure about really booking a ticket because you, you will be thinking like, um, oh, are you sure like will COVID be over by then? Um, even if like we are cleared, it doesn't mean we are 100% cleared and that's definitely true. But assuming if you're going to book, chances are the ticket prices are not likely to be high. But we just want to see a scenario. Assuming the skies are blue once again and it's safe to fly, and assuming for all of us who have actually been locked down for so long, 
And even if the ticket is going to cost twice um, the price, we would still be willing to pay for it. Okay, so bringing this analogy to property, um, probably you may feel that this is not the safest time to take any action, and that's perfectly fine. And that's probably maybe what your neighbors are thinking as well. But the question is, do you think your neighbor may consider taking action six months down the road? Would your neighbor be considering to take action, say, one year down the road? And assuming all these fellow neighbors who have their HDB reaching their five-year period and they con consequently move out from the HDB and if they were to explore buying private, it is pretty clear what is the direction of the prices of HDB and the direction that of your private, the likely direction of your private. Let's take a look at a scenario, which is a Pongo uh, flag, okay, a specific Pongo flag. If a client would to consider um, moving out from this property in the year 2012, we can see clearly most of the prices was hovering about 600,000 range. So for whatever reason, if a person chose to exit slightly later, say in the year, um, at the 10th year after this date, nothing wrong with that, but it would mean that um, they would lose about another, another possible 200,000 profit, which some of their neighbor benefited, but if they chose to stay a bit longer, the prices actually drop as they are no longer the shiniest star in the estate. And the biggest bang is, if they were to exit, for those who have exit, and assuming they go into a private in around 2013, which is the period uh, after they exit from the property, and they gain one more time in the private, that will equal to another 300,000 in the pocket. And the question is just, if this person is you, would you prefer to be the one that has gained it two times, or the person that has lost out two times, all right? So you make the decision, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what is something that will benefit your family the most, okay? So the um, some client also asked me, um, actually what's wrong with buying later? There is really no hurry. I totally agree, there is really no hurry. That's why we need to take time, especially during this short break, to really understand more about the market. Um, so that we are very clear what direction we want to go. But let's take a look at this property. There is actually a gap of about two years. Um, it's actually the same stack, okay? But there's a gap of two years. We can see very clearly, people that actually enter later, right? They end up paying more than 100 over 1,000, which this could potentially be your profits if you had chose to enter here, okay? So you make the call, what is something that is the best for your family? Um, so why it may make a bit more sense to consider doing something in this period of time, um, this refers to Skyview in the year 2013. Personally, I benefited from um, this property. I went into the property um, post-cooling measure. At that time, right, the developer was earning a mere 3% profit. Uh, what do I mean by that? They bought the land at about 1,003 per square feet. And, we, and they sold to us, this is not my unit, I'm just saying an exact example. Um, the, they sold to most of the people that bought in the year 2013 at only 1,003 plus per square feet. And because the pricing was so sensitive, most of the people that entered in the year 2013, they were earning almost 300,000 uh, from just a simple two-bedroom unit. And this is really not too long ago. So it doesn't mean that we have to go back way back to like the SARS period or the layman period to benefit. If we enter the market at the correct stage um, and we do our proper financial calculation properly, um, the chance of us to be able to benefit from all this is very high. Okay, so uh, let's take a look when, if, what if a person chooses to enter when the market is good. Let's take a look at the same Bishan area. Okay, there is this property whereby the client lost almost 600 over 1,000. This was where in 2012, the market was really good. And that client bought this unit at 1,008 per square feet and left this property at almost 1,004 per square feet. If we take a look at how much the developer was earning, this is the, they bought the land, the break-even cost was only 1,003, but they sold at 1,008. There was actually a markup of 40%. When times are good, you, we would end up buying the property higher because developer, the sentiments would be very confident and they would dare to actually sell high and they will always still be takers for it. Okay, so the, the benefit of buying when the market sentiment is not so positive, developer are also very sensitive in their pricing and that is where our potential upside would be.
And of course, personally, I really don't like crowd. Um, the good thing about if you were to consider moving earlier before all the crowds start coming out, uh, out when things are more settled, you definitely can avoid all the crowd. You have a more choice of preferred units as well. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would you would definitely need to have a plan if you decide to venture into this idea of uh, upgrading. Okay, so um, how we can work together is we can work together to plan out something that is comfortable, that is safe financially, so that we would end up having a property that work harder for us than we are the ones who have to work very hard for the property. So, um, just want to share with you, this is uh, another group of family that we have worked with. Um, they saw my Facebook ad and uh, it just started with a simple SMS that um, they just want to explore um, to see if it is possible to uh, do something with um, their current situation. And uh, in fact, they contacted me when their property was only just uh, four and a half years. And um, with proper planning, they actually now can move to something that is uh, of private status, uh, just next to the son's school, just next to the parents' in law so um, the wife is happy the husband is happy because um, he can go for a bit of chill out session with his um, uh, with his friend and um, the, he knows that there will still be people taking care of his children which is the parents and uh, everybody is happy because um, yeah um, there is an upgrade um, it is still accessible to all the kids school and all the kids help that they need um, so today if you are Mm, in between the age of 30 to 50 years old, you belong to a group of uh, people that I like to work with, which is uh, you love your family, you want the best for them, you desire to really um, properly plan out your retirement funds and to give your kids the best. And uh, more importantly, you really want to um, grow your asset and wealth safely, not by um, high risk investments, but safely and systematically. Uh, I would really love to help you and to work with you to see how we can help you uh, get to what you like to achieve. So um, we would like to help you achieve whereby you would have enough savings both for emergency and for retirement. So um, I have more than 10 years of experience um, in this industry and um, my team and I we are transforming uh, at least one family every week and um, we, we are still uh, at work, although it is the circuit breaker week. Um, thanks to technology, I will still be able to share uh, my knowledge uh, with all of you. I will still be able to share with you where are perhaps some of the good uh, lobang that we Singaporeans can consider. So, and uh, I would like to invite you to uh, have a Zooming session with me um, to work out uh, to have a clearer idea of where are your possible options um, so that um, if you would to want to consider doing something after the COVID, you are more prepared um, to, to know which direction to go towards. And um, okay, so uh, let's have a chat together. You can contact me via WhatsApp, you can give me a call or you can um, arrange for a Zoom meeting with me. At the end of this whole call, you will have a clearer idea what is the best step for you and your family, what is the safest way you all can explore upgrading together so that you can really take advantage of the current opportunity. I really see that there is great opportunity in this current market if you do proper planning. I have benefited myself and I have helped many clients benefit from such a market and I would love to work with you to help you to achieve this as well. So, um, if this is well received, I would be actually touching on more topics um, like you, um, how long you should really hold your property so that to really maximize your gain, uh, what are your possible um, exit strategy to uh, maximize the property gain as well, how to really select the correct unit in a certain property and more importantly, how to find below market property. So in the meanwhile, uh, do really be safe, stay home as much as possible and I wish you the best of wealth and um, do give me a call. Thank you very much. So what's next is I will need you to fill up the form below and I will be contacting you very shortly.